years have passed since the last of the U.S. troops departed from the Vietnam soil, but since then, thousands of our nation's veterans who served our nation so valiantly discovered it almost impossible to lead normal, productive lives. Many of our veterans are distraught, lonely, suffering from the effects of shell shock, what is now commonly called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Others say they suffer from exposure to Agent Orange, a highly toxic herbicide the United States sprayed regularly as a defoliant on the Vietnam terrain. But our story focuses on one of the lucky veterans. Fred Leo Brown is a Vietnam veteran who was able to not only face the horrors of war and death on the battlefield, but the terrifying memories on the home front. As you become your own nemesis is what happens here. If you start believing too seriously that everybody did this to you intentionally, you're going to die. But I did understand that the public as a whole, including my wife, she didn't want to hear about it. And so I respect that. And so I, 20 years, I really didn't, I tried, I try not to talk about it because I find so few people want to hear about it. But today, Fred Leo Brown is talking about the war, and not just a soldier's experiences in combat, but also the difficulty a veteran faces when he returns home. As the Vietnam War escalated and the involvement in the United States increased as well, 18-year-old Fred Brown was sent to Vietnam. He was a part of the vast increase of soldiers and equipment that was sent to aid the South Vietnamese. Brown was in the 1st Battalion of the 6th Infantry, commonly referred to as the 1st of the 6th. He was a radio and telephone operator in the frontline rifle infantry. He says he shared the same kind of supportive family system with his battalion on the front lines that he had experienced at home. In the field, we were very, very close and very supportive. We always had the struggle of I don't want to go on ambush tonight, you know. I, <coughs> I don't want to take point today. Uh, you know, I had point for the last three days. I want a day off. I don't want to take point today. Although he had never seen a field radio before, he was interested in becoming a radio operator. It was Benji Yamani that saw how eager Brown was to learn the position. I became his radio telephone operator. And in doing so, I watched everything he did. Watch how he cleaned a rifle. We had a lot of talks. Do you want to die? Do you believe in God if you die? And, you know, a lot of times you'd stay up all night. With him. So it was a very s solitary existence in the field. You know, you'd be slugging along, and basically you're only looking forward, and you're looking at someone's back. You know, that's what you did. You watch the one in front of you walk. And uh, you watch him slog through the water and the mud and struggle through the rice fields. Because in the infantry, you didn't really have a lot of time to talk. You were either walking, trying to get something to eat, or sleeping. Brown served under Benji Imani for four months until March 16, 1968, as his squad approached Hill 45. In the morning, at dawn, we moved out towards Hill 45. Claymore mine was detonated, exploding 630 caliber balls over the area. They, they just rushed over an air area like a beehive. And uh, Yamani was standing right at the Claymore mine. So there, there was one man between Yamani and myself. Both Yamani and that man were killed, but they shielded me from being hit. Although Brown survived that day on Hill 45, it was only six months before he was wounded in the forehead and his right arm by shrapnel from a landmine. 
He returned to the United States in 1968, only to face criticism and anti-war dissent from the American public. But America created this whole vision of who the veterans were. It was the Tet Offensive in 1968, the $30 billion annual war cost, the tens of thousands of casualties of servicemen, the heavy criticism by the television media of the destruction caused by the U.S. troops, all played a crucial role in creating a hostile and bitter environment for the returning servicemen. They suffered not only from their physical handicaps, but also mental suffering, the agonizing grief and frustration from coping with the sudden move from the war-torn rice fields and jungles of Vietnam to civilian life in America. Many of the men that returned were unable to make the adjustment. Fred Brown describes the frame of mind a soldier must have to survive the psychological trauma of combat. In other words, you're giving this information at a tremendous rate of speed. If your mind can take it, it can, it can go through like a time warp. If it can't, it'll crash it. It wasn't until doctors read his novel, Wall of Blood, an autobiography about his experiences in Vietnam, that he was diagnosed as suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Brown believes that every veteran who has PTSD copes with the disorder differently. In other words, I am reliving the past, and it is running parallel with, with this time frame. There's no, there's no differential in time. So I'm always dealing with a present, even though it may have been decades ago. Fred Brown says he lives Vietnam every day in his mind. He can be anywhere at any time and go back to Vietnam. He said he couldn't escape the memory of Benji Imani and other servicemen who died alongside him in combat. So instead of burying the Vietnam War, Fred Brown relished it. I felt that even from the grave that Benji and the other veterans were trying to tell me something. And they told him to teach the lessons of war, that is, travel across the nation and into the schools of the United States and educate our children about the consequences and dangers of war. All right, let's start along. Get ready to move out. Fire team formation. Chopper. Inbound. Let's lower them up. I would say that it's a program that is powerful, that it makes you think, that it maybe sheds a new light and gives you all aspects of the war from the beginning to the end of the war. I liked it. It was the first time I saw something like that. You, you got to respect it. I, was, I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. Uh, I like the fact that he brought in the students from our school, so that brought some ownership into the performance. Uh, I think he has a message that all Americans need to hear, especially in the 21st century with what our country is facing today, and a reminder that the freedoms we have have been paid in blood by many generations, and the Vietnam soldier was just some of the latest. Yes, and I think that that's uh, a reality for them. And I don't think it's anything they're not used to being exposed to. And I think kids really appreciate when we are honest and upfront with them and we tell it like it is. I actually thought it was really good. A lot of stuff he said really made me like think a lot about like my family because my brother, my stepbrother is in the Marines and he's in Afghanistan. So it made me think a lot and I was crying half the time I was watching it. So it was really, really touching. When I was sitting there and when he was talking about, you know, life in general, it just gave me chills down my spine. And He's innovative. <laughs> He's very innovative. Something you got to see. Yeah, it was really, it was too real. Really, it was, yeah, shocking. 